So before I start, I just want to get clear in my head what I want to do about this. Now the thing is, I don't really know what went wrong. Um, it could have been a combination of, of things at the end of the day, it, it quite likely was. Could have been the plastic, could have been the epoxy, it, it, you know, could have been the temperature, there could have been something wrong. But because I don't know exactly what it was, then um, all I can really do is try again. We have learnt that that particular type of plastic bag sticks to the epoxy, so that's no good. We'd already learnt that the melamine sticks to the epoxy. We'd already learnt that um, the, the, the other plastic bag I used doesn't. Uh, I, 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 I don't really want to mix up epoxy just to do tests, so every time I do a pour, I pour a little bit onto another surface to find if it sticks to that. Um, and often it does, <laughs> and usually it does. Uh, flexible plastics are usually pretty good um, because I can flex the plastic and I can then peel it off. Anything rigid it tends to almost be impossible to get off which is a, bit, a little bit frustrating because I, I, I want a flat surface. Um, but coating, uh, um, coating something rigid like I did with those plastic bags does seem to work. Now uh, um, an, another product I've found that it doesn't stick to, and in fact it comes off really really easily, is, um, is a product called Glad Wrap, which is a cellophane food sandwich wrap type stuff. So I think this time I'll use that um, and I might put in some spaces to, to uh, ensure some overfill. Explain that later. The epoxy mix, there's not much I can do about that. I'm going to use the pump system. I know it works. I've got um, new epoxy because the old one, like I say, ran out uh, as I was mixing it. And so that only leaves how to get the old stuff out. Now I'm guessing I can just chisel it out. I've had a quick chip away at some of it and um, it seems to come off quite clean. It breaks not quite like glass, but a lot like glass kind of like a softer glass um, so, so it cracks quite easily and comes away nice and clean and leaves a very glassy broken glass finish um, and it's bloody sharp um, hopefully it'll come out quite, quite easily and uh, then I can start filling it up again as for the other hole that drained obviously that's just a case of doing a better job of sealing the back um, so I can do that quite easily and then um, I just need to do some top ups on the other side uh, to finish filling the cracks and things and it will be go. I guess although it's going to be too late after the video um, should be interested to know your thoughts on what did go wrong if you if you saw what I did and thought oh shit yeah that, that's gonna set too fast or that's going to crack or it'll stick terribly to that um, then yeah let me know down in the comments uh, of course it'll be too late but that would work better with a live video but I think I'd need more than two subscribers for that now I need to chip this one out because it overheated and cracked and just looks generally quite horrible and it, it set so fast that the bubbles didn't even have time to rise to the top it's quite weird must have had some sort of reaction but so I'm having to chip that out it's actually not too hard with the chisel and hammer it's unfortunate though Still, the rest of it's not too bad. This one's got some creases that were in the plastic that I might have to deal with. The smaller ones like this one, you can even see the gold in the background there. The cracks have gone well. They're mainly to add strength and to stop it worsening in the, the biggest of the cracks. to be filled. I guess that's a beauty of DIY, learning all the time when it doesn't work, chisel it out, do it again. 
So this is a little sample of um, a pour I did just to test. What I wanted to do is I needed to get some silicon out of my epoxy and tidy up some edges and then refill them and I wasn't really sure if I wasn't really sure if I could grind it away with my Dremel tool and then refill it and it'll look okay. So I did some tests in here um, and you can kind of just see them where my finger is there almost like a ghost inside the epoxy where I did use the Dremel tool and so I'm pretty happy with that really um, as it's around the edges it's not going to be as noticeable as right in the middle of a piece of epoxy there so so I think that'll be fine now here's my latest theory for a re-pour I've prepared this hole I've put two layers of silicon around the outside to reduce the chance of leaks one quite close though now what I found was when I compressed the wood onto the close row of silicon it squashed it into the hole which meant that I'd have to refill from the top as I've done for a couple of these holes here I've had to refill these from the top to after peeling the silicon out of that gap which was quite difficult so I'm thinking of using these stirrers as a spacer so that I can't actually fully compress the silicon down. Now that will also mean that I don't need to um, refill any cracks in the top because I can guarantee it'll overfill. Hopefully anyway, nothing's guaranteed here really. So to make the top, the backing plate removable I have covered it in cellophane or pad wrap which I've already kind of tested, it seems to work alright, so so I'm going to give that a go today. So we clamped down, got the little spacers in, looks like I'm ready to flip it over. Flipped it over, you can see my previous pores, you can see how this is, uh, I don't know, maybe half an inch thick. Um, but an empty cavity underneath and uh, this is one that I'm about to do so it's empty but you can see where it was done that was maybe nearly an inch thick and that could have been why it set too quickly um, this is one that's worked well this is the other one that's ready to go so what I'm actually going to do right now is wait for the silicon to set so I'm about to mix up some epoxy and re-pour these holes that uh, didn't go to plan. Um, not sure if I've learned anything, but I have changed a few things. So I've got some spaces in which you've seen to uh, ensure that the epoxy finishes above the surface of the table, which will make, I think, um, tidying it up a little easier. I've just got to, to plane it back, sand it back, and I won't have to refill from the other side. That's also meant that I'm not squashing the silicon down quite as much, so hopefully the silicon won't uh, migrate into the cavity and end up stuck in my epoxy. And finally I'm going to wait for the sil silicon to actually set. I'm just not sure whether the curing of the silicon impacted on the curing of the epoxy, so if I take that out of the equation then that's not going to be a problem. Um, other than that, it's clamped up, it's ready to go, and uh, I'm about to do that now. I've said it before, I love this West System epoxy setup. One pump of resin, one pump of hardener, and we're done. In this case, however, I want to make quite a lot at once, so I'm going to use several pumps. Here's a the gate. There we go, that's actually 10 pumps of each. And now I've got a stir. For like I think a minute or so. Just however long it takes until it's thoroughly mixed and it looks pretty good now. Might just let that sit till some of the bubbles come out of it. Like before, literally just pour it in.
and in here although it's an awkward shaped hole again I'm just pouring it in hopefully it'll settle to where I need it well this is going much better uh, it stopped generating bubbles so I can stop worrying about it now I think and it's still soft so that problem of hardening unusually fast and getting really hot seems to have gone away same with this one yes I did stick my finger in it to see if it was still soft so I'm pretty happy with that I'll just wait now until it has fully hardened flip it over plane it back, sand it down, and I should have the top ready for final sanding. You probably can't see it from here, but re-pouring that epoxy has gone very well. <clears throat> so this is all, this epoxy is all done now. We're ready to rip into the sanding. Epoxy's done right now. So this time it finished up good. That second go at it was definitely worth the effort. Very happy with how that's turned out. Just need some finished sanding now and it should look like glass. So thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, keep watching. We've got a lot more to do on this slab and a lot more to do on the bus. So hit all the buttons, like and subscribe and all that. Hopefully we'll see you again soon. Take care.